Well, since we're here and I'm playing in the club championship, let's look at one of my victories. Should we look at the one that I like or the one I really like? But I can't remember either game. Oh, yeah, I can. Okay, so which one do I remember better? No, neither one. All right, well, look at the game where I was black because that had a funny ending to it. Something I've never seen before. It had a double pin, double fork at the same time. I've never seen that. Although he resigned before I did it. Um, no, two pieces were pinned to the king, and they were both forked. And, and so I'm going to win both of them. Usually when you fork a piece, you win one of them. I win them both. OK, so d4, which is unusual in kids' class. Oh, wait, I have a mouse? Oh, awesome. C4. Now this is called the Benoni when black plays e6. And if black plays b5, that pawn's hanging. It's free. That's called the Benko Gambit. The Benko Gambit was named after who? Benko. Mr. Gambit. No, Benko. And Benko was a strong American player from Hungary. Who's the strongest player from Hungary living in St. Louis? Some of you have heard of her. Notice how I said her. Hmm, a little hint there. Yeah? Uh, I mean, well, if Magnus lived here, that would be correct if he was from Hungary. But he doesn't live here, and he's from Norway. Although the last class never heard of him, so. Uh, the correct answer is Susan Polgar. Anybody heard of her? No? Nothing? You got nothing? Oh, well. Uh, back to our regularly scheduled program. OK, so I played e5, which is blocking everything up. Look how blocked this is. Nobody can do anything, right? So can we play in the center and move our pawns forward in the center now? No, no so we better do something else. OK, so I move my bishop. And I move my knight. And now he wanted to open up the center, so he played f4. He's attacking the center. That's not very nice, is it? Yeah. Now, I wanted to take a free pawn, but then he would take my knight, and I would cry. <laughs> so I pinned his knight, so I threatened to take the pawn. How did I pin this knight? How did I pin that knight? Yes? Uh, wait, what? You. I play queen to a5. Now, the knight can't move because he'd be in check. What kind of pin is that? Yes. Somebody. Absolutely right. Okay, now my opponent didn't want to lose a pawn, but queen a5 is a bit tricky. You know why it's tricky? If he unpins with his bishop, which looks sort of normal, then I would take his pawn. And normally he takes with the bishop, but then he's pinned again. Ha ha. Okay, but he didn't fall for that, unfortunately. So he played queen to c2, defending his pawn. That wasn't very nice of him. So I castled, because I like castling. And he played f5, blocking up the center again. It's like we're both playing checkers on different colors. Now, how did I bust through in the center? The answer is I didn't, because the center is blocked. So I played b5. And I thought he would take my pawn, and I would open it up over there. But he played g4. He wants to play g5, which is really mean. And I played b4, attacking his knight. And his knight went here. And I played b3. And if I was playing one of you guys, I would be doing quite well here, because you probably would make a mistake now. And then I would start taking things. Then I go to the emergency room, hurting my arm, taking all your pieces. Right? Yeah. That's likely. So if you were white, what would you do here? Uh, yes. Okay, to? I mean, move, take, oh, move. Partial credit. Oh. Yes. Me? Yeah. Wait, I thought you were pointing to this kid. OK, OK. You move your, you know me. <laughs> uh, you move your Practice your lines last night. Yeah. Okay. If king to f2, then pawn takes queen gives black the advantage. Agreed? Okay. We can all agree on that. Yeah. Right, I was hoping for that, but you know. You. Um, queen to c3. Queen to c3 is correct. If queen to d2, which also saves the queen, 
I take the queen, and then I take my pawn I was trying to take like 10 moves ago. Okay, so he played queen to c3. Now, if I trade queens, he takes with the knight, and his knight defends his pawn. I hate when that happens. My computer says I should play queen to b4, but I played bishop to d8, defending my queen, and I'm attacking this pawn, right? I can't take the pawn right away because he'll take my queen for free. So I defended my queen first. Now he made a good move. So I got really mad and I called the director. I said, come on, you know this guy. He can't make a good move. We all agreed and he'd take it back. No, he played bishop to d2, the best move. Now he's really attacking my queen. He's not kidding. So I move my queen away. And if he takes this pawn, then I would take his rook. So that, I think that's good for black. Okay, so he didn't do that. Also, I want to take this pawn here. Remember? Yeah. I'm attacking it for like 10 moves. So he played knight f2 and defended it. And then I took this pawn. Yay. Now that pawn's going to queen and I win, right? No, he just went and he took it. And then I cried. He played queen b3, attacking my pawn. I played bishop a5. He took my pawn, and I attacked his queen. So he moved his queen away. And I took his bishop. Should he take my bishop, or should he take my queen? Queen. You can't take the queen. We got a little of everything. Bishop, queen, he can't take the queen. Those were three answers. Two of those answers are right. OK, queen takes queen is not allowed, so the computer won't let me do it. Computer's like, no, you can't do that. Because he's in check. So he took my bishop. Now, I took his queen, and he made a small error, but it's understandable. He should take with a rook, which gives this pawn away. But then his rook is really, really, really good, and he'll probably win my pawn later. Instead, he took with a pawn, and now his rook is not good. Now his rook is behind a pawn the whole game. How about my rook? Yay, open file, right? Yeah. OK, so I played bishop a6, putting pressure on this pawn. And now he started playing badly. The computer says this position is about equal, but then he made like 10 bad moves in a row. Then it wasn't equal anymore. Okay. So he played bishop to d3, which is not good because his bishop already moved. He should get his knight out. I attacked his pawn. How did he defend his pawn on c4? What did he do? I'm going to take with the bishop. I'm going to take with the knight. How did he protect his pawn? Yes. With the rook. That's correct. Then I played knight here so my rook can come in. And he played knight here. And I attacked his pawn. I thought I did. I attacked his pawn. There we go. You see his pawn that's attacked? Yeah. What did he do about that? How did he protect his pawn? He made the longest move ever. You need like a corrective eye surgery to see this move. It's so long. Um, yes. Rook A1. Did I take his pawn now and sacrifice my rook? No. No, I played my other rook to the open file. Hooray! Now he made a mean move, so I called the director again. Raised my hand, right? And I, he played knight c1. Why did he do that? Threaten my rook. Did I see it? Yes. Yeah. So I played here. Now if he takes my rook, I take with my rook and replace it. So he played here. And I put him in check. I thought those rook, that rook was pretty silly, so I went here. Now that rook can't move. I showed him. So he played h3, and he said, you can't beat me. I'm just going to sit here. Okay. Now I did something really good. I'm winning on the b file because I said so. You see how I have the b file and he doesn't? Yeah. Is there another open file? The answer is no. There are no other open files. So I have to make an open file. Okay? You go to the grocery store, and you buy the right ingredients, and you make an open file. right? Yeah, yeah. Then if you take it to prison, you can break out, because you have an open file. Right? <laughs> nothing? <laughs> you got nothing. Right? And some of you kids better learn that. OK, so I have an open file on the queen side. I want an open file on the king side. That's not easy. It took me like four moves. <sighs> I could have had like a Perrier then instead of you know, getting four moves. Ah, green water. I don't leave my carbon footprint. 
So I played g5. And my plan is to play h5 and then open the h file. If I play h5 now, then he'll play g5 and everything's closed up. Then I can't open a file. So I play g5 and I have no idea what he did, so I'll pretend I did. He played king to e3, I think. Then I played king g7. And then I played rook h8. And finally, I played h5. Hooray for me. And then I took. And now I have another open file. Now I pinned his knight, because he likes when his knight's pinned. Okay, And he did something. No, seriously, he did. What did he do? Hmm. Oh, rook a1, that's right. Okay, then I pl or did he play king e2? Yeah, then I played rook here, and he played bishop to d1, and I played knight to b6. And the reason I played knight b6 is I want to take this pawn. Okay, and boy, he's in a lot of trouble now. He actually, there's nothing he can do about it. So he cried a little bit. I called the director. The director <laughs> cried too. Okay, because I kept calling the director over. You! He could, but I have a bishop and a knight on it. I got two pieces on that pawn. Okay, so he played a4, and here's what he was thinking. I'll tell you what he was thinking. I was thinking Arby's. He was thinking knight takes check, rook takes, bishop takes, bishop takes rook. That's what he was thinking. Okay, so I took with the bishop. Now if he takes, I or he plays this terrible move. Now if he takes... <laughs> I play knight takes rook, check. He can't take my rook because he's in check. So he didn't like that. So he played, what did he play? He played bishop f3? No, what did he play? Played something. a5, that's what he played. Okay. And then I took his knight, threatening his rook. So he took my bishop. And now every move wins, but I can only play one move because that's all you're allowed to play. So I played rook h3, check. <laughs> now he's down a pawn, and his knight and king are sort of attacked on both, you know what I mean? Yeah. Okay, so he resigned, which was unfortunate, because here's what I wanted to do. I thought he would block with his bishop, and then I was going to play knight takes pawn, check. What do you think he would do? Take. Take my knight, and then a tactic I've never seen before. E4, forking two pieces that are both pinned to the king. That'll show him. And I win both of them. You can't save one. I get them both, right? Unless you can find out a way to save them. Partial credit. Yes. They're both pinned and they're both forked. I wanted to teach pins and forks today, so that was the best example I could find. King to where? King d4, my computer won't only play that. It moves it back to e3, because that would be illegal. Wait, what? Who? Well, this is illegal. Oh, king here? Then my knight would take his king. So that would be unethical. Yes? Um, king to e3. King to e2? Then I do another fork. Yay! Then I win more pieces. Then I really do have to go to the emergency room, because... Ah, taking all those pieces hurts. <laughs> but he didn't let me do that. He gave up. That wasn't nice of him. I'm trying to, I'm trying to take his pieces here. Here? Right, then I would play rook takes knight check. You would move your king again. Then I would take your bishop. With, and I have three choices. Wow. It's too bad that didn't happen. That would have been cool. Okay, so in this position, he gave up. His king's not too safe. My rooks are a little better than his, and I'm a pawn up, and I'm winning a piece. I, I sort of like my position. Okay, that was my game two days ago, right? I can show you a game I played in 1989, but you don't want to see that. Okay. Anand was world champion before Carlson. You agree. Who was the last person Anand beat in a world championship match before he played Carlson? Then they're like, I don't know. 
He beat somebody, right? He beat someone. Who did he beat? His first name is Boris, and he's from Israel. Does that help? Yes? Well, that's a funny answer. Boris Spassky would have been right 45 years ago, but not now. Yeah. Anyone? Bueller? Okay, the correct answer is Boris Gelfand, your favorite player. Well, he is now, because I'm going to show you the game I beat him in 1989. So. Okay, so we played your favorite opening, a Ninzo Indian. Okay, and you'll notice White's knight is pinned. So where did I move my knight? Nowhere. Nowhere, but I protected it. That's pretty good. Wait, how do I remember this game? It was played in 1989. Ah. Okay. Hey, when you learned math problems when you were like four, like one plus one, how do you remember them? Oh, it was like years ago you learned that. I don't get it. Okay. How do you remember your name? You were named years and years and years ago. How do you remember? I don't remember my kids' names. How do you remember your own name? Wait, Who? Wait, question. You have a question? Yes, I have a question. I have an answer. The knight wasn't pinned. The knight wasn't pinned? Yes, it could have moved above the bishop. So what you're saying is my knight could have moved here. But the computer won't let me. It's a mean computer, right? Because then he would take my king. Okay, so my opponent played pawn here. Attacking my pawn on d4. So first I cried, then I, then I figured I'll do something about it. I remember I cried in 1989, so that's pretty good. Okay, so I took on c5, and he played queen here, which is a strange move. And then, the sort of boring in the opening, there was a really exciting move played in the middle game. Very, are you guys excited? Yeah. So he put all his pawns on the third rank, very suspicious. But he, he did it. I couldn't stop him. Okay, and we got this position. So just like when you play chess, both sides have all of their minor pieces out. We have two knights and two bishops, and we move them all out. That's what you guys do, right? Yeah. Okay, and I castled, and he didn't castle, but we're going to vote. You can vote for kingside castling, for black. You can vote for queenside castling, or... You can vote for Buchanan. Okay, that's all good. Who votes kingside castling? Who says queenside? Boy, you guys would all be world champions like Gelfand, because he played queenside castling, and obviously Buchanan wins, right? Obviously. Okay, so he castled queenside. That's the losing move. That's a terrible move. Okay, he should castle kingside, where his king is safe. Okay, now after the game, I went to Lawrence Olivier. And I said, what do you think of this kingside castling? And he said, is it safe? And I said, yeah. And he said, is it safe? And I said, yeah. And he said, is it safe? <laughs> Are we going to get sued by them or no? We're good? We're good? Look, they won't sue us? Okay, good. Okay. All right. So castling queenside, very suspicious. Somebody raise their hand, even you at home. I'll see you. And tell me, why did Bla when you castle... Why do you castle? What's your reasoning? Because your teacher told you to? No. What's good about castling? Yes. Yeah. Your king is safer when you castle, and your rook that's stuck in the corner gets to come out in the middle. I don't think his king is safer when he moved all his queenside pawns. His king's side, he didn't move any of his pawns. So my king is safe, okay? But his king looks like he might have to eat some diamonds later. We're still not going to get sued, right? Okay. No? You promised. Okay, good. Okay. So uh, this is called opposite side castling. It's called that because we castle on opposite sides. Well named. I castled here. He castled over there. When that happens, we usually see pawn storms. Okay? They're sort of like snowstorms, but they're more dangerous. Okay? So... Pawn storms means you move all the pawns towards your opponent's king. If you castle on the same side and you do that, then your king gets exposed. If you castle opposite sides, your king is still safe when you do that. So if I move all my pawns towards this king, my king is still safe. So we did a pawn storm. Okay, so I played b4. I remember it like it was yesterday. Okay, then my opponent attacked my bishop like I'm nobody. Well, he knew who I was pretty well. Okay, 
and I move my bishop here, notice I'm attacking this pawn. And I got two rooks to back it up. So he played e5. What's the only safe square for the bishop? Yes. So I did that. <laughs> then he played g5. He's going to do a pawn. But I'm going to do a pawn storm. Then he put his rook over here like I'm afraid of his rooks against my king. Am I afraid of that? Well, a little. Okay. Now, I got to bust open his king. I can't do it slow because he'll checkmate me. He's Boris Gelfin. I'm nobody. So I played a5, and he said thank you. And I played c5. Now I'm opening up his king, and he didn't like that. So what did he do? He cried. And then he tried to checkmate my king. So I forked his queen and bishop. He took. I took. And he took my knight. Now his rook is open against my king, but my bishop is blocking. Yay. And instead of taking this pawn, I took this pawn. Ooh. Yeah, that was better. Then we traded, and he took this pawn. Notice if my knight moves away, he'll take my queen. So did I move my knight away? No. My knight is pinned. Okay, so did I resign because I'm going to lose my knight? No. no. Is his king nice and safe with lots of pawns in front of it? No. What about my king? Yeah. Lots of pawns. Okay, so I played for tricks. You know why I played for tricks? Because tricks are for kids. Rook A8 check. Raise your hand if you know how to count how many legal moves, how many possible moves does black have? How many different legal moves does black, how many moves can black make to get out of check? Like five. So like five, one, five. Those are, your answers are quite odd. One, three, and five. All right, raise your hand. You. You have to say an answer. What? Three. Three is correct. Uh, you, can, you can play knight here, queen here, or king here. Uh, now, two of those moves lose a queen. He didn't want to lose his queens. He didn't do those moves. <laughs> this move obviously loses a queen, because I take it. This move, it's not so obvious. It's actually very tricky. Now I win a queen with a skewer followed by a fork. And the last time I did that, I was at a Greek restaurant. Oh, I see it. Bad. I see it. No, I, I, I didn't get the lamb. If I did, it would be a bad joke. Yes. That was funny. Don't look so sheepish. Yes? Ha, very funny. What, what's this guy saying over here? Yes, you. Wait, you're right. You feeling okay? That's right. Rook A7 check. Notice how it's a skewer, so I sort of gave it away. Then he would take my rook, right? Right, and then I would go here, and then I would win. Yay, hurry for me. So he didn't like losing his queen, so he didn't do that. So he played knight to b8. Now I unpinned my knight, and I got another piece to attack his king. How did I unpin my knight and attack his king? And I really attacked his king. I put it in check. That's, that's attacking his king. Anyone? Bueller? The oh, bathroom's over there. Yes? You moved your queen to... In a circle? Got dizzy? <laughs> you know why I do that a lot? I'm the rotating GM. Yeah. Anyone? Yeah, queen where? Yeah. B2? Queen B2. I don't think that's check. Let me check. No, I double checked and it wasn't check. Yeah. Yes? Um, Very quick. Rook to D8? No. That's no. risky. Yeah. It's risky. Also, it doesn't unpin my knight. Bathroom's still down there. You in the back. Queen f5 is correct. Check. Now, I'm not pinned anymore, and he's in check, and this still loses the queen, which I just showed you. So now he made your favorite move. He resigned. You guys are used to that, right? That happens a lot in your games. If he doesn't resign, he has to go here, because otherwise you have to resign. <laughs> then I would go bishop takes pawn, you would take my bishop, really? and I go checkmate. Check Yay. True story. Check Notice how the knight's pinned. Check or, check 
Or you could move your queen, and then I have two checkmates. I could sack my queen and then mate. Or if I don't want to sack my queen, which I do, I could sack my rook and then mate. Notice how all of my pieces are attacking his king, which has no pawns in front of it. My king has a lot of pawns in front of it. And this rook was really active, right? No. Terrible. Terrible. That's the worst thing you ever saw. OK, now I'll show you my favorite game that was played this, well, actually, it's 2014. So it was played last year at this very chess club, but not in this room. It was two floors up. Now, as you know, the best college in the world, not academically, but for chess is, I'll give you a hint. It's in Webster Groves. Webster, Webster University. In, oh, yeah, that's correct. Webster, Webster has 10 grandmasters going to that school. And some of them are upstairs right now. Okay, and some are the best in the world. Okay. Now, one of the guys who goes to that school, he's their board four. He, I played him in, well, let's say April or May, since I don't remember. Let's say April. Okay. And this was the game we had. If you remember the game I just showed you, and you don't, it started out this way, didn't it? Yeah. I, I have a question. I have an answer. Yes, and this is, liter uh, this is not like the last question I asked you, which was actually from the United States. Yeah, it's from the Thank you, Garrett, for being so precise. Okay, why what is What is this, boy interrupted? There? Why is that still well, I, I just work here. Why is that still up there? I just work here. Did okay. I know why it was. So wh how would I know? Okay, yeah, now in this position, my opponent played here. And if you remember the last game, the guy did that. Remember that? Yeah. Okay, yeah. this guy did this. Okay, and then we developed our pieces because we're the cool kids. <laughs> Okay, then he didn't want to be pinned, so he unpinned. He went here. And then, just like my last opponent, he put all his pawns on the third rank. But unlike my last opponent, he castled kingside so as not to get mated. So I mated this guy even worse. Actually, I played the other rook. Okay, very similar. Okay, now, he was afraid. Don't touch the chess pieces, they're noisy. He was afraid. I was going to play knight here, and knight takes pawn, which I would have. So he played a6. Now, the, th the theme of this game is overloaded or overworked. Okay, And this is Sunday morning, so sometimes overloaded. But this is overworked because I'm working. See? So you see this bishop that is now green? It's envious of the other bishop, right? N nothing. You got nothing. OK, it's defending. This pawn, and it's defending, and then this weird stuff just happened. That was cool. It's defending this knight. So can it move both plays at the same time? No. no. So I took this one. Oh, actually, he played h6, bishop h4, which I forgot. It's good memory there. h4, bishop h OK. OK, now I took the knight. If he takes with a bishop, I have a free pawn. He didn't want to lose the pawn, so what did he do? Took with a pawn. Now his king is nice and safe. No. <laughs> what would Lawrence Olivier say? What would Dustin Hoffman say? OK, so next time you go to the dentist. OK, never mind. So white play, I played knight e4 attacking this. He played knight b4 attacking my queen and attacking my knight. Where did I move my queen where it's still protecting my knight? Yes. Um, B1? B1. Now, his knight's attacking my pawn, but my queen's defending it. And his bishop's attacking my knight, but my queen's defending it. So my queen is overloaded. <laughs> so he took my knight, and I took his bishop, and he said, yummy, yummy, free pawn. <laughs> but but that's, that's not, Bob Seeger wasn't talking about that. I don't know about that knight move over there. Okay, oh, so. I, you see a four? I haven't had lunch yet. Where is it? <laughs> what? Yeah? Me? Yeah. Uh, very Who, who's he? Who's he? He, ju he just played knight takes a2. He's going to move again? Don't I get to move? If he plays knight c3, my pawn will take it. Thwarting your plans. Also, it's not his turn. Okay, I played knight to d4, 
and he thought I was going to play knight to c6, and he's right. Okay, <laughs> he should play queen d7, but he made the losing move. Making the losing move is good in one instance when you're playing me, then it's okay. <laughs> Otherwise, don't do it. Okay, he played knight to b4, stopping knight c6, and getting his knight off of this awful square. Now I give him the sugar me do. Okay, now his king ran all over the board like this until he was dizzy. Then when he passed out, I won on time. Yes. I played knight takes e6 because his f pawn is overloaded. His f pawn is defending the pawn I just captured. Shh, shh. And the f pawn is defending the g6 square. Although he has to take my knight because this is a little fork here. So he took my knight and I played check. Now, if you kids were playing, you would check back and forth forever and start laughing. Okay? That's what would happen, unfortunately. But I prefer winning. That's the way I do it. I win. So I played bishop to g4, and I'm going to play bishop takes e6 and queen h6 mate with advantage. How can he save his e6 pawn? How does he do it? Because this is going to win if I do that. By the way, if he attacks my queen, mate. So he didn't do that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, he moved um, the pawn right next to the queen. Oh, this one? Yes. That's the main variation. He didn't do that. Then I would go check, check. Then I would take this. And I'm threatening the rook, and I'm threatening mate. And my computer says I'm plus five. Plus five is good. Plus one's good, but plus five is better. Uh, your move is about equally as good as to what he did. He played queen to d7, which also defends his pawn. Now I made a move that's very shocking. You must be nine years old to see it. I'll wait if you're under nine, you can leave the room. Okay, I played these, the crazy looking move, bishop f5. Notice how it threatens checkmate. Checkmate's good. How did he stop queen h7 mate? What did he do? Because he doesn't want to get checkmated, then he'd lose. <laughs> yeah. He did. He did do that. Now, if I could put a rook on the h file, that would be mate. Do you agree? Yeah. So I played rook d4. Now, if this if this pawn moved, his bishop would stop the mate. That's why I sacrificed my bishop, so that pawn can't move. So he moved this pawn. And then he moved this pawn. Now it's not mate because he takes my rook. But I have another rook. Now I'm going to play rook h4 mate, and then I'll win. Yay. Now he's got two ways to stop it, the right way and the wrong way. Shh. He didn't see the right way. He played the wrong way. The right way is rook c7, which I showed him after. Check, takes, takes, here. And the reason he played rook c7 is the rook can take. And now I fork his rook and his knight, which is worth more. The rook, so he saves his rook. And now white has a lot more pawns than black. I can't count how many, it's too much, but a lot more. So he didn't like this position, and he didn't see this. So he played the obvious move to stop rook h4 mate. What can black do to protect this h4 square? The bishop's protecting it. How can you protect it again? In the back. Correct. I said correct. Queen to d8. Now, the reason he played queen to d8 was he said he didn't see my next move. But I saw my next move. Okay. All rook on the h file is checkmate except rook h4 because he keeps protecting it. So I played rook f3. Now rook h3 is checkmate. Okay, eventually. So he played f4 to block my rook. That wasn't very nice of him. Now if I check, he'll play bishop to h4. Now I played a shocking move. You must be at least nine and a half. Okay, I played rook takes d6. Because his queen and bishop are overloaded. They're both defending h4, which stops the mate. And they're both defending the pawn I just took. So if he takes my rook, then checkmate. Hooray for me.
Right. Or as I would say, checkmate. OK, so he didn't like getting checkmated, so he played bishop to h4. Now, I have meat in five moves, but I have a good excuse for not playing it. I didn't see it. I played mate in seven. Mate in five is very easy. Check, check, check. And I didn't see queen g6. Otherwise, I would have played this. Now he's got one legal move and then mate. That's how the game should have ended. But the way it ended was funnier. I played queen h5 check. And then I played check. And then I played this check. Now, I think I have all my pieces attacking. What do you think? No. Also, my king is slightly safer than his. Yeah. Black has a lot of legal moves, but this is the only one. He resigned here. Now, I have mate in two, and there's two ways to do it. Who can find mate in two moves? There's two answers. Yes? Queen d6. Queen d6. He has to play here and then mate with advantage. The other mate is this one. Now, black has zero king moves that are legal. Zero is not a lot. So he has to play knight d5 and then mate. I'm not sure which mate I would have played. He resigned before I could mate him. How are you resigned? Terrible. Well, he was watching in the 1970s, he was watching Nixon on television. He learned how to do it. Uh, so I won. Yay. So in both games, I used all my pieces to attack, not just one piece. I didn't move my queen out on move two and try to mate my opponent. Move four, I moved it out. OK. And then his king was unsafe because he didn't have any pawns in front of it. Conversely, my king has a couple of pawns in front of it. All of them, right? So if, you're, if you have pawns in front of your king, it's pretty safe. If there's nothing in front of your king, not as safe. <coughs> Questions? No? OK, now you can play for a few minutes. But don't play too good, because then your opponent might cry. Yeah.